Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and welcome to Jupiter and its magnificent moons. Now in this video, I wanted to ask a what if question and the question is, well, what if Jupiter actually acquired all of the other planets as its moons? Can we actually try to create this in Universe Sandbox? Let's find out and welcome to What The Math. <laughs> So you may know a little bit about Jupiter and its 67 confirmed moons. Uh, all of them are actually visible right here, especially if I enable the orbits or the trails. Now, a lot of these moons are very, very small. They actually used to be asteroids that got captured by Jupiter over the billions of years of its existence. But four of them are very large. Uh, Callisto, Ganymede. Ganymede is actually the largest moon in our solar system. Um, Europa and Io are pretty big. There is, a matter of fact, not too far off from some of the planets. Ganymede, as a matter of fact, is larger in terms of size than even the smallest planet, Mercury. You can actually fit Mercury inside. So I thought, well, why don't we try to place all of these planets that we have, specifically seven of them, around Jupiter and see if we can, if we can actually create a customizable or customized uh, Jupiter system. Is it possible? Well, let's find out. We're going to do this um, in descending order first by placing Jupiter in the middle, then using the binary system with balanced motion to place Saturn somewhere not too far off from it, because Saturn is actually relatively similar to Jupiter in mass and in size, just a little bit less massive. Saturn is um, about 100 masses of Earth, whereas Jupiter is about three times as heavy. So here, um, both of these planets will need to be kind of balancing each other's motion and orbiting around one another. Almost uh, creating like a dual planet system, actually. Now let's uh, place some of the other objects. So let's uh, go with the next heaviest object, most massive object, and that's uh, Neptune. We're going to place Neptune a little bit farther away. Then we have Uranus. And then we just wait, because it already seems like it's not going to work. Look at that. Yep. Uh, Neptune got destroyed completely within seconds. So that didn't work. All right, let's try this a little bit differently. Let's place Jupiter uh, in the middle again. And this time we're just going to use normal orbits and place uh, Saturn around it. Then uh, Neptune will be next, a little bit farther away. And then Uranus. Let's see if this actually works. So we're going to wait right here, wait a few uh, in-game weeks, and see if this works. And as you can see, um, both of these planets already kind of acquired a very interesting orbit around one another. With Neptune once again getting attracted too close and very likely being destroyed any second now. Unless I magically created a stable system, and I totally didn't. It is now part of Jupiter. And Uranus might be next because this is definitely not a stable system either. So, so far, we kind of failed. So far, it's actually a lot more difficult than you can imagine. All right, well, let's try this again. Attempt number three. Let's try this a little bit differently. Let's place Jupiter first. And now start with the smallest planet, Mercury. We're actually going to create a miniature solar system. We're going to place Mercury here. Zoom out a little bit, place Venus. Zoom out a little bit, place Earth, and now place Mars. Let's run this to see if this is stable. And um, you can see Jupiter lighting up, and that's because there's actually a bug in the game where the tidal forces seem to affect the planet that objects are orbiting around, not the other way around. So there's a slight bug, that's why Jupiter is suddenly so hot, because of the tidal effects that it really shouldn't be getting. But as you can see, this looks pretty stable, right? We've, we were able to place four satellites, which used to be planets, around Jupiter. Okay, okay. Can we place one more? Let's go with the next most massive object, Uranus. We're going to place Uranus a little bit farther away. Maybe a little bit, yeah, right, right, right around here. And wait a little bit as well. Actually, we can probably place Neptune as well. And if, you know, if things go wrong, they go wrong. Let's place Neptune. And now let's wait again. So... We currently have six satellites, six planets orbiting around Jupiter, with only one missing, Saturn. And that's probably going to be the, the most difficult to place. As you can see, the system still seems to be kind of stable. 
even though Jupiter started moving around because of the attraction from Neptune and Uranus. But nevertheless, uh, this seems to be, at least for now, a stable um, planetary system with basically six moons that are actually really, really massive. Which kind of makes you think, maybe there, somewhere out there, there is actually a planet or an exoplanet that does have something very similar. It might be very massive itself, and it might have really, really massive objects like Neptune, uh, which normally would be uh, known as um, super Earths. This is a type of a planet that is known as a super Earth, um, basically orbiting around that planet. So what do we do with Saturn? We have to place Saturn very gently somewhere so it doesn't destroy this beautiful system for us. We're going to maybe place it in the opposite direction of the motion of Jupiter at a slightly higher distance, so maybe around here. All right, let's try this and see what happens. Maybe a little bit farther. Boom. There is a Saturn. And let's see if this actually worked. It's for some reason actually under an incline. And just for fun, let's actually add the rings to Saturn as well, because, you know, Saturn does have rings. So we're going to uh, slow down just a little bit and add a few rings of Saturn right there. Beautiful. So now Saturn has realistic rings that are orbiting around it as it basically orbits those planets in the distance. Or actually, it's technically orbiting Jupiter. Now, what do we, what do we have here? I don't see Mercury anymore. No, it's here. Mercury, Venus, Mars, and Earth. So the orbit shifted a little bit. Uh, Uranus and Neptune are still there as well. And Jupiter is going to start moving towards Saturn, probably. But let's see what actually happens. We're going to wait a few uh, years, in-game years, and find out if, if I was able to create a stable system with everything as a moon of Jupiter. It's very likely that it's still not very stable because I can see some of these uh, planets share in the orbit. But for all we know, we might have actually did, uh, done it. We might have actually created a stable system. And you can kind of see the rings of Saturn spinning right there in the distance. It looks very, very beautiful. But so far, so good. So let's see how long the system survives for. Because it's still not very stable. There's no resonance between the planets, meaning that at some point they might crash into each other. There's also um, no resonance between the larger planets. So they're going to, at some point, start attracting the smaller planets and pushing on Jupiter in a, in a way that is going to destabilize other orbits. But I still would like to see how long this lasts for. So far, we've definitely succeeded. But I have a feeling it's going to be destroyed soon. You can already see Mercury slowly losing its orbit. And being kicked out of the, the inner Jupiter system into the outer Jupiter system. Where it might actually become a moon of, uh, what is this, Uranus. Or something else. Anyway, so let's accelerate this and just watch the magic happen in, in slightly faster, at slightly faster pace. So you can see Jupiter is moving quite a lot. Um, it's definitely being pushed and pulled, well, not pushed, but definitely pulled by various um, gravitational forces from Neptune, Uranus and Saturn. And it's creating these beautiful shapes that I believe Vsauce very recently talked about. There's actually a name for the shape, and if you remember what it is, do post it in the description, or sorry, or in the comments below, because uh, I think everyone should know what this is called. And I'm not going to spoil it for you. Google it up, find, find out what it is. It's a very cool mathematical shape. And anyway, so looks like... Ha! Huh, I don't know what happened here, but our Saturn is very close to us, and its rings are going crazy. It, its rings are actually out of control. We also kind of lost Mercury, I think. And Neptune just flew away as well because Saturn decided to kick it out of the Jupiter system. Um, I'm not sure if they're still in orbit. They might still actually be in orbit. We can check that by clicking the orbit here. And it looks like Mercury is definitely not. Mercury has definitely departed and flew away. So this is officially the end of that stable system that we created. It lasted for about two years. Uh... You can see that this is a size comparison of these planets. I clicked the chart accidentally, but it's a pretty good way of seeing the size comparison between the planets. But basically, there you go. So, creating a stable system with Jupiter, where all of the moons are basically other planets, 
is very challenging for as long as Saturn is involved, because Saturn will definitely disturb the system. If it wasn't for Saturn, we probably could create something with Uranus and Neptune, um, because they're not massive enough to affect the system, but Saturn does have a lot of mass, and it's definitely going to create a lot of chaos. And, well, that's really all I wanted to say in this video. I wanted to see if we can do it, and we kind of did it for a little bit, but definitely not for a long time. Let's actually just compare the size once again, just so you can see how similar in size um, Saturn and Jupiter are. And Neptune and Uranus are significantly smaller, but they're relatively similar to each other. And then we have Earth, Venus, uh, Mercury, and of course, a fragment that I think used to be... Huh. I think this used to be Mars. I think Mars actually got destroyed by something, I, we, and we totally missed it. Yeah, I can see that Mars actually very likely got destroyed by the tidal forces of Jupiter because it approached it too close. You can kind of see the leftover fragment orbit in here, and that's because it's very likely just disintegrated and became um, a bunch of astero um not asteroids, but a bunch of rocks. I can kind of show you what I mean by this. By using Venus here, we're going to actually decrease the semi-major axis of Venus, making it approach a little bit closer, just so you can see what actually happened to Mars as well. So let's let's cause the same thing to happen to Venus, and maybe not too close yet. And so here we go. Venus is also going to disintegrate into little pieces and become just a fragment any second now, especially if we increase its eccentricity and there you go so this is kind of what happened to mars now the reality is that this is actually how all of the rings of jupiter um, saturn neptune and uranus were created as well an object that was similar to an asteroid or very likely an asteroid approached too close to the um to the gas giant or to the ice giant in case of uranus and or neptune and it basically disintegrated creating what you see right here as rings so this is essentially how all of the rings were created in our solar system. And, well, that's quite beautiful and that's a nice way of finishing this video. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to share this and don't forget to subscribe if you still haven't. And you know what? Come back tomorrow because you're going to definitely learn something new and something interesting. I'll see you in the next video. Space out. See you guys later. And as always, bye-bye. And just to finish this video, let's actually go into the powers here and basically hold all velocities and wait for everything absolutely everything to crash into jupiter so now we're going to have quite a lot of explosions happening because i've just basically stopped everything in its path and everything is very likely going to fall to the most massive body which is of course jupiter